Hello, hello guys, just finished my fifth project and boy did I learn a lot. So I followed along this tutorial, which is a game where you have a dinosaur and it's just, you know, it's basically a side scroller. Things that are hard, but also really simple. I'm just gonna go through the project real quick, just to give you an overview of what I did. And the things that are hard, I'll do it in a separate video with the explanation, because I have to do my research. Okay, here we go. Starting with the parallax background, it was actually pretty easy. I a lot of parallax layers and their images as a sprite 2d extended by doubling the horizontal size with mirroring and then change the speed of each parallax layer by going to motion and then scale then you got to change the scale based on how close it is to the screen if it's closer the higher the scale if it's further away then the lower the scale and the scale in this case is the speed at which it moves one thing i've noticed is that my assets had different sizes compared to the video bro the assets are different what <laughs> what the fuck god Damn it, do I have to go? Ah, oh, like this. We made the player scene, which we call Dino, by using the character body 2D and an animated sprite 2D for the animations and also two collision shapes. One collision shape for running and one for ducking. And here's what the completed scene looks like. So the Dino looks pixelated as fuck. So how to fix that is you would go to the node where you put the sprite in, in our case animated sprite 2D. And then you go to the canvas item, texture, filter, and then you click on nearest. I don't know why it works, but it works. Then I wanted to make the ground, but the assets didn't match. So I had to go to his GitHub, which was more difficult than I expected. So here's uh, me struggling. I can just go to his GitHub. It's okay. It's okay. What the fuck do I use GitHub? Ah, oh, fuck me. Do I, how, how do I, how do I, <laughs> where's the download button? Oh, I feel so dumb. Oh my God. I guess I cannot, I cannot. I think it's this one. So you gotta go all the way back. Oh, that's annoying. Now the ground is pretty simple. It's basically just a sprite to deal with a collision shape on it so the dino can stand. So, quick summary. So far we made the parallax background, a dino and a ground. Time to make the main scene where we put all of those things together, which looks like this. Yeah, we also add a camera 2D to reposition the screen. And then I ran the scene for the first time. Ooh. That's nice. There was this thing with the ordering uh, in the Z index, which is the depth. So like X, Y, and then Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll explain it in a separate video. And then it was finally time to write some code. And I actually enjoyed it for the first 20 minutes, but then it got complicated, as you can see here. So I'm not gonna go through all the code, but I'm gonna go through with what it does. So there's code for gravity. The dino can jump by pressing spacebar. We also had to add a line of code so it can only jump when it's on the floor eh, with the uh, it's on floor function eh, or else uh, this happened. Whoa. <laughs> The dino can also duck. Here's the handy thing. You can actually toggle to see your collision shapes when you're running the game. Just go to debug, visible collision shapes, and then you can see the collision shape like so. Now, the next question was how to activate or disable the collision shapes. Uh, and that's actually pretty fucking easy. <laughs> you basically just get the collision shape and then dot disable and then set it to false or true. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. All right, the next part is all about making the obstacles. There's four in total. The stump, the barrel, the rock, and the bird. Not surprisingly, everything was pretty easy to do, except the bird. <laughs> But uh, more on that later. And there's also a cool tip for when your object has a lot of angles to it. So you know that the conventional collision shapes are like rectangle, circle, or capsule. And here's the trick. This is apparently a thing where you go to the sprite, click here, uh, create a collision polygon to the sibling. Uh, looks like this, and then you get this. And then you can just change how it looks. What? I guess this looks fine. <laughs> Now we basically just repeat this scene for the other obstacles. And then once we did those three obstacles, it was time for the bird. Now the bird scene was a bit special because, well, first of all, here's the scene. You can also see that it's an animated sprite 2D. And also it got two collision shapes. And then came the biggest thing ever. Oh my goodness. From here, it was like, like the fur was just like going. <laughs> it was time for the script that 
tied everything together okay here's here's a summary basically you had to put in a lot of variables like the dino star position camera star position and determine the beginning speed and the maximum speed as constants then you had to make a function called new game which is you know pretty simple it basically call it whenever the dino dies and then you want to start a new game then in here you basically just reset all values in every node in the process function i put in some code to update the dino's position based on speed and then this happened all right let's have a looky looky huh now at this point of making the game the parallax background is infinite but not the crown so here's the question for you guys how do you do that how do you make the ground infinite huh so what they did was first get the screen size with get window.size and then store it in a variable. Then in the process function, you got to update the ground position with this line of code. Holy crap. Okay, I understand this code now. It's actually really easy. Fuck me, man. So the thing that you really, really have to understand is how the positions work and how to find them. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is the fact that this one moves. So the camera moves to the right every frame, basically. And the ground basically stays still until this condition is true then the ground updates its position to the screen size and i'll explain in a bit what it all means so first of all uh, how to find the x position like what do these positions really mean right so if you have like a screen is the x position of the camera like the left side the right side like where is it same for the ground position like is it the left size or is it the right side i have no idea until you find out that you can actually go to your scene and then just click on the ground just click on the fucking node look is right there the x position is zero and if you're really not sure you can always look at that node 2d transform and then position and you can see here it's actually zero but what about the camera oh the camera's in the fucking middle glad someone told me about that shit and look position 576 so now we know the x position is in the middle of the fucking thing for the camera and the ground is at the left side of the screen so now we know that every time a frame goes by the camera's x position which is in the middle of the screen goes to the right and the ground position which is here this stays at zero until this position minus the ground position is bigger than the screen size times 1.5 now this seems random as fuck right first of all what is this and why is it times 1.5 now first of all what the hell is screen size again uh screen size we got it from the get window dot size which gives us a width and a height but because we use the x here we only get the width which means that it's this it's the width of the screen now why do we do 1.5 if you were to look here 1.5 this is here it's this part and why do we have to use this part because if you go to the camera it's the middle and what happens and what happens when the middle part of this is in the middle part of this exactly <laughs> the camera goes from here to here okay okay look 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 boom 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 boom, boom you see that it's in the middle now. This point is screen size.x times 1.5. So at this point, the, the camera position minus the ground position is the same as the screen size times 1.5. And then if the camera goes like boop, boom, this whole code activates. And then you can see here that the ground position plus equals the screen size, which means that the ground here plus equals the screen size. So it goes from here to here. And then it basically repeats this whole thing. Now a bonus question is why the fuck does this like light green white ish thingy move because we can see here gray stuff gray stuff here and if but if we were on the game we would expect to see here gray stuff when we immediately start but there's no gray stuff what why is that well the answer is because if we go to the bg the background we can see here that this part is not a parallax layer this is a parallax layer so th the short answer is because it's not part of a parallax layer and a parallax layer like moves along i guess you, you know what i'm okay <laughs> Okay, thank you. Bye. I hope that's clear. Now we make the HUD where we add the score, high score, and a press space to start text. For now, it only looks like this, uh, but we can already instantiate it in the main scene for now. And then I found about the get node function. This is very cool. Yo, what the fuck? So if you instantiate a fucking thing and you don't see its children here, what you have to do is do this, get the node, go here, look which node it is. In my case, it's this one. And then type it in here. Dot text. Ah, I see what they're doing here. Yep. Okay. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it now. Here's how you start the score count. Only after you press space at the start of the game. Ah, uh, sometimes it's just like so obvious, but you just have to see it, right? So just a, <laughs> just a quick question for you guys. I want to start the score timer or like the score is counting shit when I press the space bar. How do I do that? I just got to put it in a boolean like this, uh, I think. And then you just got to basically say, hey, uh, do all of these if game running is true. And I'm guessing he's going to be using input shit. So this function, uh, I think it's like this. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, he put it as an IL statement. What the fuck? You can do that? Wait, you can do this shit? That's crazy. Oh, because I didn't fucking define it. I gotta say jump. Jesus Christ, my guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Code, man. Then I got rid of the press space to start text after pressing space. And then go to the script to play the right animations. But for the idle animation, he did something weird. Please have a look. <laughs> this part, I don't fucking get it. Maybe you understand it. The dinosaur has an idle animation, but it doesn't have an idle state here. And that's because the game running variable that we use in the main script doesn't appear in here. There is a way for us to pass it through though. So just inside this if statement, I'm going to add another line which looks for game running variable from the parent. This allows us to get any variable from our parent node. And I'm saying that if this variable is not true, then I want to be in an idle state. But if the variable is true, then I want to execute this section of code just like I was doing before. Make sure that this jump animation though and this else statement doesn't get indented when you do that. He got get parent because if you go to the main scene, this is like the dino here is the child. And then this is the parent. So the get parent would be the main. It, it, does that make sense? But if you go to the scene, then suddenly the dino is the parent. And then all of these are its children. And this parent has a script, which has a game running thingy. So that's how you basically access it via a child, which is kind of what, you know what I mean? It's kind of like what? Oh, nice. It fucking works. Oh. From here on, it was really getting difficult. So I'm just gonna mention some things and concepts and then I'll make a separate, more detailed video with explanations, okay? Please, please just give me time. This video is already getting too long. So here I had to make an obstacle spawner, which was really interesting. So remember the first project video I ever did? It also had a random enemy spawner, but here's how this guy did it. So what did he do? Preload all the obstacles and store it in a variable. Then he made an array where you can store all these obstacle scenes. And then there were a lot of extra variables, like an array where you look at the obstacles that have spawned, a variable where you can see the last obstacle spawned, a variable for the bird height with the uh, upper and lower limits. So I think you can see that even for a small game like this, you gotta have to think about a lot. Yeah, I don't... Wow, okay. But moving on, here's how the function for generating obstacles look like. We also did some weird shit with getting the ground height and the obstacle height and the screen height and then th some weird math. And I think it was so we can place the obstacle at the right height or something. I have no idea, man. I don't... It, it, shit confused me. But one thing I learned is that when you work with a sprite, it means you're working with an image. And an image in Godot is a texture so to get the height of a texture you gotta use the texture dot get height function okay that's pretty useful that's pretty handy uh then i got angry for a while okay why is it every time like the when the video gets to third part it's always getting so fucking insane hard like what the fuck is this man you're not gonna tell me that if you look at this code you're gonna be like oh yeah that makes sense like what Jesus Christ, dude, I thought this was a good tutorial, <laughs> but then he fucking pulled out this shit. He's not even explaining sh- Ah, yeah, fucker. How does it make sense? How does this code make sense? How does it work? Why? I'm so mad. <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> There's so many fucking things. And then the rest is just random code where we just add a difficulty, adjusting the difficulty level, uh, which was pretty simple. Multiple objects that spawn next to each other based on the difficulty, which was pretty hard. And lots of things more. Please just watch the tutorial yourself. It's so much better than this video. <laughs> And then we also made the bird spawn randomly between the upper and the lower limit. Now, the bird itself looked very static. So we also had to adjust the speed so it looks like it's, you know, actually moving. Okay, we're almost done with the project. Guys, keep it up. We also had to add some code for when the dino hits the object because then it's game over. You pause the whole game, a restart button appears, and then you basically reset the whole game. So we had to add code for that to work as well. 
And then lastly, the high score. And I didn't really know that it was going to be this simple, but it works. Score. So let's uh, have a looky looky, eh? Hmm, my god, it's that easy. And that's it. That's how I made the game. And here's footage of me playing. Just to show you guys my gamer skills. Fuck. <laughs> so that was a lot. What I want to do is I want to make a separate video explaining most of the things that came in the tutorial. So expect a video about signals, the collision that happened in the game, and things like get tree dot past, get node, get parent. Yeah. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.